Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming along today to join me for Healthy Skin Naturally. I'm Natasha from This Nourishing Life. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Natasha Dorbney, This Nourishing Life, and also I have a website, uh, thisnourishinglife.com.au. So I'm really excited today to share with you my love of DIY and creating your own natural skincare. When we are looking at why we want to do this, it is so important to really check in with yourself about what's going on in your body. So the average woman, woman is using around 20 products a day. So think shampoos, conditioner, deodorant, cleansing and toning and moisturizing the skin, uh, moisturizing the body. And when we look at those 12 products, we can have upwards of 160 different ingredients there. And if you're not being aware of what you're purchasing and you're just going to the supermarket and choosing something off the shelf or, or at the pharmacy, many of those products could, can contain chemicals that can cause a lasting damage to our health and our body. So things like hormone disruption and uh, metabolism upset, and we can end up with issues with our skin if they are not right for our skin type or contain ingredients that are drying or stripping. You know, that can lead towards fine lines and wrinkles uh, later on in life. And we also then have this uh, issue with the sun. So when we're placing chemicals on our skin, that interacts with the sun. So we can then have other things that arise there. So it's very important to start looking at what's going on your skin what ingredients you're choosing or what products you're using so if you're someone that is not interested in diy then please do make sure you're looking for organic and natural uh, products there are many out there on the market now that are great for those that are just after something quick and easy to use but what i'll be showing you today of course how you can create healthy skin naturally at home with just a small cupboard full of natural ingredients. You don't need a lot to be able to create beautiful products and uh, some gorgeous essential oils that we also use that help to enhance the benefits of what you're making. It can be so satisfying. I love making my own things. Uh, the it saves me money, it saves me having to go out and try and find something that's going to suit my skin as well. Uh, as we know, you know, a supermarket don't always stock beautiful range organic ranges for us so we then have to travel to other places to be able to get that too I've got three children I'm a one-stop shop girl or I shop online so I love being able to make my products it is so uh, satisfying a lot about uh, making my own products when I was younger so when I was 14 my nana bought me a beautiful book called body craft by Neris Perchin actually give you a look at that so this is a great book to get hold of if you are wanting to learn a lot more she has a whole lot of different books that are wonderful teach you a lot um, I will be releasing an ebook very soon and uh, we'll let everybody know when that's available so if you keep an eye on my Facebook page I do have a small booklet at the moment I just want to extend on it and just Add a little bit more in there and really help you all to get started and know what you're using and why. Let's get started. So today what I'm going to show you is I'm actually out of cleanser, so I'm going to be making my face cleanser, showing you how quick that showing you how to make a beautiful uh, body butter that can be used as a foil on the body. Uh, so just And you can see there the beautiful consistency. It's, I made for the pattern summer, but, so it's a little bit firmer just now, but it just melts into the skin, it's beautiful. So I've got this on my face today. You can see that I don't have sheen or anything like that from using it. It's beautiful and nourishing. I've got some great essential oils in there that supporting um, hydration and skin balance and uh, anti-wrinkle because we all want that. So let's start with our cleanser because this is where we start with our skincare routine. We want to make sure that our skin is clean and prepped, ready to absorb all the goodness from our moisturizers. So like you're using uh, clean hands and fingers that 
So I've washed my hands before coming on. I've made sure I've got sterilized um, spoons, forks for using as well. So that's just a matter of tipping over some boiling water and making sure your jars are nice and clean too. Because when we're making our own body products, you can get natural preservatives to place into these to help extend their shelf life. We wanna make sure that we're not gonna get bacterial growth because then that can um, have the opposite effect of what we want. And it's nice and clean. So I'll make sure you read my recipes so that you guys can get the exact quantities if you're wanting to write this out. So four spoons of aloe vera gel. I'm actually going to make just a half batch today. So I'll just do a one tablespoon. This doesn't have to be absolutely exact as well. So this is a great thing about some of our products we're making is that they are very easy to make without having to get too exact. The science comes in more when we are looking at doing water and oil emulsions, um, making that involve bringing fats or oils and water together and we need to look at um, temperature and, and things like that. Uh, so then we're also going to pop in some, the witch hazel is an amazing astringent, great for helping to tighten, cleanse, purify the skin. One tablespoon. So if you don't have witch hazel, you have just put water or you could make a herb water if you wanted to, which is just an infusion, the same as you would use if you were making a cup of tea. You can do uh, single infusions, which is where you're just popping your herbs in, adding your boiling water, allowing that to infuse one time. If you want to, you can make double or triple infusions where you then strain out that water put in fresh herbs again and start the process over and repeat that up to three times if you'd like. So then also going to place in some, oh, and also just to note when you are using herb waters that you will need to be more mindful of adding a preserved antibacterial essential oils because uh, we can end up with more opportunity for bacterial contamination there. So again, just being mindful um, and that the shelf life will be affected. So vegetable glycerin, so we'll measure this one. So we are using just a teaspoon. When you're using vegetable glycerin, it also has a preservative quality. It is great for helping to hydrate the skin and lock moisture into the skin. So sometimes when we're cleansing, if we strip away too much moisture, you'll find that you are then having the opposite effect, especially if you've got oily skin. If you're stripping away too much of the oils, your body will actually amp up more and it will produce more oils. So we do want to avoid that oily skin. We don't want to strip away everything, even though you feel like that's what gives you the clean feeling. We want to encourage the body to rebalance itself. So when you take a look away a little bit, encourage it to rebalance that oil production and go from there and work in a stage, a step by step process or in stages. Uh, so, vegetable glycerin, if you're using, you need to be wary. So, if you add 20% or more of vegetable glycerin to any recipes you're making, then what will happen is you will actually start to draw moisture out of the skin. So, that's where we're just using a small amount. Uh, right, castor soap is our. Uh, you know, our dirt removing agent as such is also going to offer a slight foaming benefit. Castile soap can be drying on some skin types. All right, just trying to concentrate. One teaspoon. So remember, I'm just making a half batch, which is why I'm only adding one teaspoon. Again, we've also got that vegetable glycerin in there, and we're going to add a tiny bit of oil as well. So don't worry about having oil in your cleanser. It's not going to make for oily skin. I'm going to add a tiny bit of rosehip oil. So just to make it a little bit luxurious about the different carrier oils after. So just a tiny bit, it's a half batch, remember. So I've just added half a teaspoon. Beautiful antioxidant rich vitamin C in there to help with um, supporting collagen and elastin production as well. 
Right. Uh, I forgot to bring my bake, baking soda in with me, but I'll add that after. Not everyone will want to add baking soda, depend on your skin sensitivity. I like to add baking soda to mine because it offers a slight uh, abrasiveness, so it's good for doing a gentle exfoliation. Skin a lot after and you know playing with my children. I don't always have uh, super clean hands all the time. Playing with toys, getting the dirt outside, especially now with gar beautiful gardening weather coming in, and it's time to get the gardens going. So I'm out there a lot, touching my skin, and sometimes I find that can increase my oil production, and I just get a bit of build up on the skin more. So the baking soda in there works really well with my skin. Uh, for me, it's really helped with balancing out from having a slightly combination skin type to really reducing any oily areas for me. So I like soda in there for that reason. So it's beautiful cleansing benefits. Sometimes when the, all I'll do is I'll just pop a jar of baking soda in my bathroom, damp my, um, have a damp face, soda and massage that over and it just helps to really invigorate lift my skin back up again so baking soda can be a super gentle and effective way to to cleanse the skin so then also going to add some essential oils now i'm adding tea tree oil to my cleanser because breakouts i do the occasional spot um you want to be able to combat that so for a half batch, it's we're not going to be using a huge amount of this cleanser at one time. I'm also going to add lavender for its soothing and calming benefits. So this is great in summer. Not getting burnt, it's beautiful to add the, to offer your skin that support, that soothing support after being outside so much. It has a natural um, pain relieving benefit as well. So if you're someone that is suffering uh, with skin conditions that can be quite uncomfortable, then lavender is a great oil for you to include because it has a natural analgesic effect. Tea tree, beautiful for its purifying and cleansing um, properties on the skin. Its ability to help combat bacteria as well. So if you have got uh, breakouts happening, you know, so that excess oil production, this is a environment where bacteria can really thrive. So we do want to have some of that antibacterial effect in there, very healing to skin types of that um, that are suffering with breakouts. So then all we need to do is just stir it all up. If it's a little bit runny for your liking, you can just add a little bit more of the aloe vera gel and it will emulsify a little bit more. Vera gel, the combination of the aloe vera gel, castile soap, the glycerin, all those products actually emulsify together very well. I'm just going to pop a little bit more of mine, but what you will find is that it will thicken up a little, so it won't stay completely, it won't stay completely liquid, it will actually thicken up. So I do like using this one knowing that I don't have to add any gums or anything to it for it to become a lotion. All right, so I'm just going to leave that. That's ready for me to go and cleanse my face later tonight. Where did I pop the lid? Who knows? Pop that aside. All right, so once we've cleansed our face, so literally we're going to just dampen the face. We're going to massage a small amount over. Then you can use a face cloth or you can rinse off with... Uh, just with water, splashing it over, whichever is your jam, whatever you like to do when you're cleaning your face. The other thing that I love using when it comes to face cleanse, and I have a couple of sets of these, is the In Your Face Wipes. Now, these are great because all you need to do is wet them with water, massage them over, and they're going to help to remove dirt and oil, and you can see it sitting in the microfiber. So this is another great option. If you're someone that is looking for convenience and you're wanting to be able to just the surface dirt of the skin, you're not worried about inject, you know, getting anything infused into your skin in terms of um, the properties and benefits we get from the ingredients we used, then any face wipes are a great option. I love these for removing makeup as well, and they're just so handy to have on hand. So I make sure I've always got my any face wipes. Uh, if you are wanting to remove makeup and you want to do that naturally as well, 
simply massaging some oil over your uh, over wherever you've applied the makeup so over the eyes especially generally when you're cleansing that's going to be getting off your foundation but using oil massaged over the eyes is a fantastic way to remove your makeup so you would do that prior to your cleansing then the cleansing is going to help to remove any excess oil that's sitting there we then want to make sure that we're toning because what toning does is it helps to rebalance the ph of our skin and it also helps to remove that still left there from cleansing. So I just keep a spritzer bottle for my toning. You can fill, then fill that up with your witch hazel, which is a great astringent. And because witch hazel can be a little bit much for some skin types, I like to use it mixed with rose water. Now you can make your own rose water from rose petals, so um, sourcing organic rose petals and doing an infusion to make your rose water, or you can get this from pharmacies as well. So pharmacies are a great um, place to get your rose water from. And I will read out my rose water recipe, so if you're wanting to write this down, um, grab a pen and paper. So this is a beautiful tonic that you can customize to your skin type as well. So if you are someone that has oilier skin, you may want to increase the witch hazel a little bit, decrease the rose water a little. If you have got dry skin, then you'll want to go the other way. So a little bit more rose water and a little less witch hazel. So they're both going to have cleansing and purifying properties to the skin, going to have um, balancing for the pH, and they're going to have astringent properties for helping to tighten your pores up as well. So this is a really great step when you're wanting to improve the texture of your skin. Uh, when we are looking at our rose water, rose water is the leftover uh, water from our rose oil distillation, and we know how expensive rose oil can be. So this is a great way because it, uh, to get rose into your skincare products because generally there's also going to be some traces of that rose oil in that water. So beautiful, incorporate that. Generally, you're looking at it, uh, you know, you can be looking at several hundred dollars to get pure rose oil, just, just a few mils of it. So, this is 50 mils of rose water, 30 mils of witch hazel, half a teaspoon of vegetable glycerin. So, again, we're wanting to avoid any excessive drying out of the skin, and then up to 15 drops of essential oils. Now, I keep the essential oils very low in my toner because. I am going to be then applying a moisturiser which has essential oils in it as well. Get a lot of essential oils in there. You can literally just make that up straight into your bottle. This is a 30ml bottle, so for this size I would then just half it. So that was an 80ml recipe. Um, so you can just half that down to whatever you need on hand. Spritz it onto, if you're using a in your face cloth, just flip it over, use the other side, or a cotton pad, or onto a cotton ball. And you can also take the opportunity to increase your circulation to the skin at this time by wetting your cotton pad or your um, cotton ball with water. Sit out the excess water, spritz onto your top, spritz your toner on top. So the reason we wet it is because it means we don't have all our toner absorbing into it. Our toner will then sit on top of that, and you can slap that over your face, so just holding onto the edge of your uh, your cotton pad and just slapping it onto the skin. And that's going to help to draw more blood to the skin. It's going to help to increase the circulation, which means we get better nutrient delivery in our skin as well. We're going to have more even skin tone when we've got our circulation, um, you know, working all over. All right, and then it's time to moisturise. So there's two ways I like to moisturise. One is using a face oil and one is using a face cream. So I go by what my skin is feeling like and what I think it needs. I'll use my face oil generally. And uh, this bottle here is a 30ml bottle that will last me for about a month. And then at night time or if I've, um, you know, if I've been out in the sun a lot or I feel like my skin just needs some extra, extra nourishment, then I'll look at using a cream. And the reason I'll use a cream is because it will just sit in the skin and those top layers of the skin a lot longer and slowly absorb in. And it just offers a little bit more barrier because we've got a higher saturated fat content in there. Make it solid. So with a face oil, really quick and easy to make, which is why I love using a face oil as a moisturizer. Just because it's an oil does not mean you're going to end up with oily skin. Like I said, I use this daily. I don't suffer from oily skin. 
we're going to use around 70% of a base carrier oil. This is something like sweet almond apricot kernel oil. Then the rest of that, the other 30%, is going to be made up with our specialty carrier oils and our essential oils. So carrier oils, let's have a quick look at those so you can get can understand some of the different benefits we can get by using different carrier oils. So our apricot kernel oil is very light and easily absorbed into the skin and it's very gentle. So it's great for mature skin. It's great for um, prematurely aging skin or dry skin because it's going to really nourish it. Rich in vitamin A, C and E. So those are our antioxidants. They are our collagen elastin supporters. They are going to help with the elasticity of your skin as well. And it also assists in uh, moisture balance. So if you've got dry skin or prematurely aging skin, generally it means that it's not staying well hydrated. And apricot kernel is a great oil to um, add in there as your carrier to help to lock that moisture in. So sweet almond oil is the other one I mentioned. I love sweet almond oil myself because I've had some texture damage to my skin from having um, perioral dermatitis when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And what sweet almond oil does is that it's natural emollient. So it helps your skin to improve its texture. And I've noticed huge improvements to the texture of my skin. So a lot of my damage was all around my chin and it was almost papery looking just... Um, in, in texture it wasn't papery in terms of damaging easily but it had that uh, the the pores were quite large as well so I've really noticed the difference in the smoothing from using the sweet almond oil and sweet almond oil has also really helped with the uh, redu reduction of the oiliness in my skin as well so I did have combination skin prior to using my own products Sweet almond oil helps to break down any clogged up sebum in your pores. So even if, you, if you've got oily skin, this is a good oil to choose as a carrier oil because it's going to help to break down any oil that's sitting in the skin that you're struck that is then creating bacteria and breakouts. So those are our two main base oils that you might use. You might also look at using grapeseed oil. That's another um, wonderful carrier oil, lovely and light. Our more specialty oils though, so our avocado oil, which is deeply penetrating, really rich in nutrients. We can use around 5 to 10% of it in a blend. It's going to help with dry skin or skin that is damaged and needs that extra penetration in order to deliver nutrients to the skin cells. Um, avocados and how amazing they are for us, our body when we eat them. So we're offering that to our skin from the top. So also, on as a side note, they're great for cellulite blends that you might be making because of those penetrating benefits. Jojoba oil, using around 5 to 10%, so up to 10% in a blend. You don't need to use pure jojoba oil on your skin. So it's anti-inflammatory and it's antibacterial. It is great because it is very close to our skin's natural sebum. So it works beautifully in balancing out your skin. So skin conditions that cause a lot of dryness and breakouts and irritation. So very soothing. Beautiful on baby skin as well. Wheat germ oil is one I love when you're looking for tissue regeneration. You're wanting some SPF uh, benefits as well. So wheat germ has an SPF benefit of 28. It's very nutrient rich and easily absorbed and helps to support the collagen production and the reduction of oxidative stress to our skin. So oxidative stress, or um, some you may know as free radical damage, and this is what happens from exposure to chemicals, exposure to uh, the sun to some degree, exposure to environmental, uh, let's say pollution or toxins, uh, from the way we eat, from the type of water we drink, from the, the chlorine that's in our showers uh, and in the water that's going on our skin. So we want to protect against all of that as well. And wheat germ can be really great to help support that. So again, just a small amount going into your blends. It can offer a uh, benefit of helping to protect the other oils that are in your blend because of its vitamin E content. 
you need to be aware that wheat germ does have a very low heat uh, tolerance though. So wheat germ oil can become rancid if it is left out at room temperature. So we do store it in the fridge. Oil, which I added into, I love rosehip oil for its ability to support tissue regeneration, for its vitamin C and antioxidant content. So it's very protective and regenerating and great for helping to support um, rejuvenation of the skin. Raspberry seed is also a favourite of mine. I've um, sourced, it, it can be difficult for some people to source. I think Plant Essentials in Australia may sell raspberry seed oil now. This one is from Pure Nature, which is a company in New Zealand. You will need to check if they do um, online ordering. I don't know if they do. Uh, so whenever I'm on a tour over there, I'm going to be topping up on some of these beautiful products they have, but I'm sure there are places in Australia. Once I run out and if I've not been over to New Zealand, then I will have to make sure I find some other sources. But raspberry seed oil has an SPF of 28 to 50. So it is an amazing addition to your skincare to help support uh, with the protection of the sun. It is also high in vitamin A and E and antioxidants. So just like rosehip oil, we're getting beautiful regeneration benefits from it. Uh, stimulates cell repair. So again, for me, this is especially important for helping to reduce uh, any tissue scarring that I still have, but amazing for helping with these fine lines and wrinkles too. So we're going to be nourishing our skin beautifully with that one. It also offers benefit to UVB, uh, UVA rays. So most sunscreens and skincare are only offering benefits to the UVB rays of the sun. And it's thought that the UVA rays, which are the ones that can actually penetrate very deeply through the skin, may be what is contributing to a lot of the sun damage that occurs, um, especially in Australia. Uh, yeah, so beautiful for, for protecting the skin from damage as well. So those are our carrier oils and the different benefits you can have. Uh, there's also other oil. There's so many oils available. Um, you know, we can get argan oil as well, which is another great one that I also have on hand when I'm feeling like switching things up a little bit. We have so much to choose from. I generally, in my face oil, will have definitely my raspberry seed, especially coming into summer. My rosehip oil. I have a base of sweet almond. And then I'll often add in a little bit of argan oil as well. And be sure that you're choosing pure organic oils where possible because we want to make sure we're, again, putting the best on our skin. Our essential oils come next. So I've put my favourite four here. Geranium is amazing for supporting all skin types. It's really great for helping to support the balancing and the hydration of our skin. So I love geranium recommend that everyone includes that in their skincare. For me, as I was saying before, I don't tend to get breakouts, but I'll get spots. And for me, these tend to be deeper rooted, which is why I'm now going to be working with some more tea tree in my cleansing and a little bit of damage. And I want to avoid getting uh, scarring. So myrrh is an oil that is really regenerative to tissues and healing, but it's great with wound healing and great with deeper healing. So whereas our lavender is going to be more of our surface type healing, and this is great if you've just got surface concerns you want to heal, myrrh is great if we're wanting something a little deeper um, acting. Lavender for its soothing benefits to the skin, uh, for its antibacterial benefits, for its natural pain relieving if you've got any um, sensitive skin conditions. It's also great on sensitive skin as well. So it's one of our, what we call a NEAT oil, where it can be recommended for spot treatment NEAT. So it means that it's very sensitive and uh, very great for sensitive skin. The other one is tea tree, because even if you don't break out, we want to be looking after our skin in terms of bacterial balance. So tea tree is a great oil to have on hand. Um, you can dab it on spots as a spot treatment as well. The other oils that I love for skincare and really depends on what you're wanting. So if you have got trouble skin then you and your skin is oily or dry, you might want to look at an oil like cedarwood, which is going to help with breaking down uh, congestion in the skin. It's also great for soothing irritated and dry skin types as well, though. So it kind of works both ways, that cedarwood. Healing to the skin. Sandalwood is very similar with our skin. Cedarwood, great for supporting dry 
and irritate sandalwood oxidants as well. Patchouli oil for tissue regeneration. So if you're not necessarily struggling with the breakouts, but perhaps you had troubled skin when you were younger and your skin is not looking great texture-wise, you want to help support regeneration, then we look towards our patchouli oils. They're great for supporting cell turnover and regeneration. And to that, your frankincense, which is very healing, um, anti-inflammatory and a great antioxidant as well. So combination of frankincense and patchouli can be great for supporting um, skin that needs a bit of a pickup. And frankincense is amazing for supporting the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles as well. As is myrrh, myrrh is great for our fine lines and wrinkles. So that's another reason I love having it in there, not just wound healing, but also supporting effects of aging that we want to age gracefully. Let's face it, we're all going to age. We just want to do it well. And we have the, the ability to do that without spending $50 on a tub of anti-aging wrinkle cream. Helichrysum is one I love to keep in my bathroom. And this is a bit of a splurge facial oil for me because helichrysum is amazing at helping to support our fine lines and our wrinkles and our antioxidants and our, heal, our healing. It's an amazing healer to the skin. So what I have in my bathroom is I have some rosehip oil that I've just left pure. I want to give my skin something really special and nourishing and a bit like a treatment. So it's like doing a treatment moisturizer. I have my rose up oil with some helichrysum oil in it and I'll just apply, apply that as my moisturizer. I'm wanting to just give my skin some extra love. What else have I popped down is my favorites. So we've got citrus oils. I love using citrus oils for their cleansing um, and brightening and invigorating and rejuvenating benefits. Great for cleansing and spot treatment as well. So things like our wild orange and our litsia and melissa and lemongrass are great oils to use in the hair as well. Lemon very purifying to the skin. We do need to be aware that they can be photosensitive too. So for some people, so I often find that I actually don't have a lot of a problem, a lot of trouble with using citrus oils on my skin and then sun exposure, but some people can find that they become more sensitive to burning in the sun. So if you're someone that generally has a good sun tolerance and then you have applied wild orange oil all over your body before going out, and so you know even just three or four drops in, a, in 10 mils of carrier oil applied over the whole body and then you've gone out in the sun, you may find that your tolerance is not as good as usual and that you may be more prone to burning. It's one of those unfortunate benefits of citrus oils. But if you, use, if you are someone that does end up with that effect, so getting that photo um, sensitive effect from citrus, just use the citrus oils at night time. So you can use them as a nighttime purifying and cleansing, or you could use them if you're wanting to do a purifying and um, deep cleansing mask or exfoliation. You can then bring the citrus oils in at that time. I to use things like my lemon and my melissa as spot treatments for their beautiful purifying effects. And one that I forgot to mention earlier for those that are struggling with congested skin that um, perhaps is an internal issue because our skin is created from the inside out. So we do need to be aware that our skin is part of our de uh, detoxification process. And if a lot of stuff is coming out of your skin because you've got a lot of stuff going in that's not great and our body's not coping with that and not eliminating it through other means, then you could also try using juniper berry to help draw out. You'll find that when you're using drawing agents, so if you're using um, masks and drawing and purifying essential oils, uh, if you are using... Uh, what else is a great drawer and cleanser, you know, things like our um, witch hazels and things like that. Or baking soda as well as another drawing agent. You may find that you feel like your skin gets worse before it gets better. And that's because it's pulling out what's sitting there beneath, beneath those top surface layers of the skin. So do persevere with it. Know that sometimes you have your skin will appear better before it gets worse because we just have to pull out that gunk that's sitting in there, that toxicity. And once you have drawn that out and allowed your body to then have this fresh elimination system, you will bruise and you are able to really start 
start working on the texture and, and the condition after that. So I mentioned that we're going to have a look at making a face cream as well. So I did, I have semi-prepared this earlier. So here I have melted down the beeswax and the butter components of my cream. So depending on what you're going to be using in your face cream will depend on the amount of beeswax you use. So for my recipe that I for, um a safe, so a beautiful balance for the skin. I use cacao butter and I use shea butter. So I'll show you the difference in these two different butters. So cacao butter is a very hard and solid butter, and our shea butter is the softer one. So you can press into this. This one's a softer butter. So you can see I've just left a big fingerprint in there. So if we are using just uh, the cacao butter or cocoa butter, then we won't need as much beeswax. And if, our, if we are in somewhere that has cooler weather, we may not need beeswax at all because the cacao butter is very solid. So it's actually going to act in helping to solidify your cream. The shea butter, butter being a lot softer, you need some beeswax once you've combined that with your liquid carrier oil it can help it to maintain its consistency so this one here that I showed you earlier this one has uh, both the shea and the cacao butter in equal parts so a quarter of a cup of each of those two a quarter of a cup of shea butter a quarter of a cup of cacao butter and then it's got two teaspoons of beeswax and the butter and the beeswax together and then we add the carrier oil in. So I haven't added the carrier oil yet to this. We add half a cup of carrier oil. Hopefully I can get this open. Thank goodness for tea towels. So half a cup of carrier oil, which I've literally got half a cup left in my bottle. This is a carrier oil that I've infused with calendula. So I've added the calendula in because it has beautiful astringent properties, which is great, like I said earlier, for helping to tighten the skin. Great with helping with pore size and texture. It is also anti-inflammatory. It's anti uh, It is great as a healer so calendula, calendula is an amazing healer and when you've made up your infused cream, you can add this to ointments to nappy rash creams to eczema creams to um, any any creams where you want extra healing and soothing support so for the skin absolutely beautiful so half a cup goes in there with our butters and our beeswax that up so my beeswax and my butters were still a little bit warm so it's not going to go while I've added a cold carrier oil in it's still going to stay liquid until it's fully set it won't set until it has come right down to room temperature so you can just see there that it's still running liquid so now up of base and to our one cup, I work on 3% um, ratio with my essential oils. We only use a very small amount. So I'm going to, so we're using 100 drops of essential oils in this one cup of base. And while 100 drops sounds like a lot, we only use a very small amount when we actually apply it to the skin. So you are not going to be getting 100 drops on your skin in one go. We are only going to be getting around two to three drops. We're using this as a body butter and you were going to be use it, using a tablespoon of it at a time then we might look at reducing those drops down because of course we're going to be getting more of the product on our body and we don't need as many drops of essential oils but in general that two to three percent is what our aromatic dressings which um, we talk about a lot in our beautiful oil community a great moisturizing and emotional support our aromatic dressing where we do five to six drops of essential oils in 10 mils of carrier oil. So that is around about a 2% dilution, and that's exactly what we're working with here. So you can leave that at 100 drops of essential oil if you want to. 
You can choose, if this is a body butter, you can choose your oils purely because of loving the aroma. Um, you're going to be getting physical benefits to the skin regardless of what oils you choose. They all have some form of benefit to the skin. But of course, you can stick with these more skin orientated oils as well. So our florals, um, and so like our frankincense and our myrrh, uh, some you know our tree oils like our tea tree, our sandalwood, our cedar, our cedar wood earlier that I absolutely love that DoTerra has released this year for our Australia and New Zealand market is our manuka oil. So I love using manuka oil as spot treatment. So it's a step up from our tea tree. Great healing benefits to manuka. Also amazing immune support. So it's a great one to add into your body butter through the winter season if you're wanting to be able to offer yourself some topical immune support. But one hundred for you by pouring 100 drops into my butter right now. I'm going to leave that just for now. Um, showed you what it ends up turning out like. Let's just pop the lid back on. So we want to make sure that whenever we're using oils, we do put our lids back on straight away. We don't want to have them oxidizing while they're sitting about. And I will just share a little bit about support we can offer our body and the hormone support we can offer our body because we know that we can support what our skin condition is like topically. But as I mentioned before, when we're talking about problem skin, is that our skin is created from within. So it's actually really important to look at what we are putting into our body because that is going to affect what our skin looks like on the outside of our body. So if you are really struggling with hormones and hormones of what are affecting your skin, we have a beautiful oil called Clary Calm. It's the Women's Monthly Blend. And this is really used to help support yourself through your hormone cycle through the month. So I love what this one has done for me. I don't get breakouts now around ovulation time and around the time of my period. So this really helps regulating my body and my skin after. Um, so my, my youngest is now 19 months old. Uh, but I was finding that as my cycle was regulating itself and I was, I was still breastfeeding as well, that during her first year I was getting those breakouts, um, you know, or getting some, getting a lot of um, more congestion than usual. And by using the Clary Calm, I've been able to, was able to greatly reduce that. And now because I am feeding her a lot less, I'm not having so many of those um, hormonal imbalances happen. Really great for supporting your mood. If you're someone that suffers greatly with PMS, um, PMT, and you know becomes a <laughs> you know a banshee or um, someone not very nice um, at some stage for the month, it will vary for all of us depending on what our hormone balance hormone balance is like and what our hormones are doing. It is a great way to support yourself through that. The other thing to look at is supporting our body's natural cleansing systems. So we want to make sure that we are drinking plenty of water, that we are fully hydrated because hydration is really important for our body's elimination process. It's also really important for keeping our skin hydrated too. So we need to ensure we're drinking enough water and two litres a day is not enough for some people because we should be looking at our water intake in relation to the size of our own personal body. So 22 kilos of body weight, what is a one litre of water per 22 kilos of body weight? If you want to get even more exact, you can go 48 mils of water per kilo of body weight. But it's so much easier just to go one litre per 22. So if you were 66 kilos, then you would be looking at three litres of water a day. If you were only, for example, 44 kilos, two litres of water a day. So it's really important to understand that this blanket two litres a day is not enough for some people. And if you have a diet that doesn't have very many water-rich foods in it, you may need more as well. If you're someone who is active, you will need more water again. It's around about half a cup per half hour of, yeah, per about half hour of exercise, um, up to a litre if it's very strenuous, sweaty exercise. If you are going out in the sun, if it's a warm day, uh, you're going to need more water. And it's also important to note that in winter, the dryness of the air, even though it, because it's so, even though it's cold and damp, that coldness can actually cause a lot of drying out to our skin. So, really important to make sure you drink enough water in winter. If you're struggling with hydration, you are drinking a lot of water, and you're finding that it just flows through, and you're still feeling very dry in the skin or not very hydrated. Try adding a pinch of Himalayan salt to each glass of water, and it's going to support your body to optimally hydrate.
So I find that sometimes when I'm work, when we're coming into that hotter weather and I do start to increase my water intake, that my body doesn't always hold it as well. And so I then make sure I'm popping a little bit of salt in. First start of our natural cleansing process, we can amp this up and we can start adding natural um, other natural products to our water. So our fresh squeezed lemon juice is an amazing way to alkalize the body, which is going to help to support your body's defenses against damage, which is going to help to support your skin and is a beautiful way to bring a natural glow back to your skin from within. So my skin is always more glowing and fresher when I'm having fresh lemon juice in my water. And I try to do that daily and I am trying to be really onto it this summer while we've got lemons in abundance and I am juicing extra and I'm freezing them, I'm going to vacuum seal them, chuck them in the deep freeze and pull those out when the lemons get really expensive again at the beginning of winter and towards the end of summer as well when the uh, supply starts to wane. Nobody likes to pay $8 a kilo for their lemons for the week. Then you just pop lemon, water, uh, lemon oil in my water. So this is giving us the benefits of the lemon skin. So we've got loads of cleansing and purifying benefits to the body. It helps to break down petrochemicals. And so just one to two drops in your lemon water in the morning. Make sure you give it a bit of a stir or shake up to help disperse that before you drink it. And that's a great way to also support that natural cleansing. If you're someone that really needs um, to give the body a bit of an overhaul, consider coming back to a plant-based diet. Our fruits and our vegetables are super rich in nutrients. And this is how we start to create that strong skin from within. We also need to make sure that we are giving our body enough saturated fats because our skin cells, well, all of the cells in our body require cholesterol. And this cholesterol is what helps to create their cell wall. And if we don't have a cell wall with good integrity, then we can struggle to get nutrients in and out and, and optimal hydration as well. So it's really important to make sure you've got enough saturated fats in the diet to help to support the production of nice, strong, healthy cell walls so that our cells can have better integrity, they can maintain their moisture better and they can hold their nutrients better. So plant-based diet is amazing for supporting glowing skin. We should be aiming for around seven, or a minimum of seven cups of fruits and vegetables a day. Many people are not doing that. So if you are not getting enough fruits and vegetables in, perhaps you're only having some fruit and then you're having some vegetables for dinner, you're having sandwiches for lunch, so perhaps you can even get half a cup of vegetables at lunchtime. Consider changing up the way you look at your food. So adding in juicing and smoothies can be a really great way to help us increase the amount of fruits and vegetables we're getting in our diet. Now, juicing, is juicing is an amazing way to give a huge nutrient injection into the body. Juicing as my 15 minutes to nutrient overload um, and really helps to get up to also I aim for around nine cups a day where possible. Um, smoothies, uh, some baby spinach, which the banana masks the baby spinach, chuck in a couple of dates if you're a person that loves your sweet foods. Some raw cacaos, we're getting huge doses of magnesium from our raw cacao, um, blend it up with water or some coconut milk or almond milk, and you have this power-packed, um, nutritious and plant-based food to really enjoy, beautiful and chocolatey, chuck in some wild orange if you love, a bit of a Jaffa taste, um, peppermint if you're a peppermint girl. Salads, uh, soups and stews and just in general reducing our anti-inflammatory foods, so our foods like our, um, our grains, processed grains, uh, dairy, wheat especially and meat can be very acidic to the body and very inflammatory. So if you've got stuff going on the outside, you've got pain syndromes or anything like that, then we need to look at an anti-inflammatory diet and a diet that is alkalizing, reducing the foods that are inflammatory, increasing the foods that are anti-inflammatory. And that's going to help you to glow from within. At what we can do topically, we've looked at what we can do internally. And I hope that you have learnt loads today from if you would like to learn more about using essential oils in your products and you are 
not sure about what types of essential oils you should be using, it is very important to look at the purity and also the potency of those oils. Make sure that you are using an oil that has the constituents and the benefit you want to um, have within that oil, where our oils are grown and where our, how our oils are distilled can affect the quality and can affect the benefits of the oils. So we do want to make sure we look for pure, potent, therapeutic, grade essential oils. And if you would like any help with learning about doTERRA essential oils and you are not currently working with someone else to get doTERRA essential oils into your life, they can be used in so many different ways and I would love to be able to help you and support you um, and our beautiful tribe of inspiring women who are in their everyday lives and creating more natural lifestyles so that they can feel healthier, happier and more energised. So I would love to help you if you're wanting to learn more about essential oils. Otherwise, thank you so much for viewing today. Thank you to those that are live. Thank you to those that are watching this in the future. Post any questions and comments below. I would love to hear from you and have an amazing rest of your day.